Hello. So today is, uh, I am going to discuss the Vygotsky's uh, scaffolding and Jean Lave's um, situated learning theory. Um, I have outlined my discussion to this. We have Lev Vygotsky, uh, just a little background about him. And then uh, a little introduction about the social cultural theory, uh, the zone of proximal development, and then the scaffolding. Then how to use this method, the scaffolding method in the classroom. And then uh, we, I will discuss Jean Lave and then uh, her situated learning theory. So um, as an educator, we have heard of the concept of Vygotsky scaffolding. It may sound like a construction term, uh, but Vygotsky scaffolding and uh, the related concept of the zone of proximal development are teaching methods that can help students learn much more information much more quickly than they would with traditional instruction. Um, however, the scaffolding theory is only effective if you know how to properly implement it. Otherwise, uh, it can actually hinder the student's learning. Um, this is Lev Vygotsky. So uh, he was born in Russia in 1896 and he died at a young age, very young, 38 years old. And his work uh, began when uh, he was studying learning and development to improve his own teaching and he also he he wrote on uh more on language thought psychology of art learning and development and educating students with special needs when he was a young boy uh, he was educated under a teacher who used the socratic socratic method um, this method is a um, systematic question and answer approach that allowed Vygotsky to examine uh, current thinking and practice higher levels of understanding so with this experience under this teacher together with with his interest uh, literature and uh, his work as a teacher led him to recognize social interaction and language as two central factors in cognitive development and that that became known as the social cultural theory of development so um vygotsky work on his theory around the same time as piaj that we discussed uh, earlier uh, in between the 1920s and 30s but they had clear differences in their views about cognitive development because uh, in Piaget, wala kaya niya gibutang weight ang language. Well, uh, this is a comparison. In social interaction, uh, for Piaget, it was more on individual, while Vygotsky was more social. Ang work ni Piaget uh, sa iyang Piagetian task focused heavily on how um, how an individual's cognitive development became evident through the individual's own processing of the tasks while Sivigotsky believed on the uh, believed on giving more weight on the social interactions that contributed to the cognitive development of individuals pa para sa iya social environment or or the community takes on a major role in one's development. Uh, he emphasized niya that effective learning happens through participation in social activities, making the social context of learning crucial. And uh, parents, teachers, and other adults in the learner's environment all contribute to the process. So um, this, uh, the, the teachers, the parents, and adults they explain, they model, they assist, they give directions, and provide feedback to the learner. Uh, peers or mga uh, kagrupo niya 
uh, cooperate and collaborate and enrich the learning experience. So, kung kay PJ individual, kay Vygotsky is it's social. On the cultural factors, uh, PJ believed uh, that there are universal stages of cognitive development, while Vygotsky believed in the crucial role that culture played on the cognitive development of children. Now, Piaget believed that as the child develops and matures, he goes through universal stages of cognitive development that allows him to move from one simple explorations with senses and muscles to complex reasoning. While Vygotsky, on the other hand, looked into the wide range of experiences that a culture would give to a child. And on language, uh, Piaget did not uh, did not give emphasis so language um, opens the door for learners to to acquire knowledge that others already have so learners can use language to know and understand the world and solve problems and language serves a social function but it also has an important individual function it helps the learner regulate and reflect on his own thinking and according to Vygotsky children talk to themselves uh, if you are going to observe uh, ako, personally i have observed this if you will see kids especially kanang mga preschoolers they play around and uh, they 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 uh, have toys no they will talk while they are like for example uh, this is uh, this is a plane na naghold siya og isa ka block of something or stone ba na or, this is a plane and this is the airport marag i-represent niya so naga naga talk siya uh, ang gitawag ana ni ni um, Vygotsky is um, talking to oneself or private speech so ang ang private speech daw is a form of self talk that guides the child's thinking and action and uh, he believe in the essential role of activities in learning, um, children now learn best through hands-on activities than when listening passively. So learning by doing is even made more fr fruitful when children interact with knowledgeable adults and peers. So mas mas kuan pa siya, mas essential or mas uh, sa itawag ana sa bisaya. Basta fruitful pag na ay naga naga guide or na ay naga interact. Then, um, this lead to the ZPD, Zone of Proximal Development. So, ZPD is the, the set of skills or knowledge a student can't do on her own, but can do with the help or guidance of someone else. It is the skill set, uh, skill level just above where the student's currently is. Okay? So, when a child uh, attempts to perform a skill alone, she may not be immediately proficient uh, at it so alone she may perform at a certain level of competency which we can refer to as a zone of actual development so actually so this is the child so learner can do independently that this portion this is where they can learn independently and then there's also a zone now that learners can't do at all but then this one is the zone of proximal uh, development. Maoni siya ang the this is the difference between the child can accomplish and the child cannot that the child cannot accomplish without without guidance. So this is where the zone of proximal development is. This represents a learning opportunity where a knowledgeable adult such as, as a teacher or parent or a more advanced peer can assist the child's development. And uh, let's go to the scaffolding. So what is uh, scaffolding? Um, to support or assist uh, that lets a child accomplish a task cannot accomplish independently is scaffolding. Katong support, you know, I remember we have the zone of proximal development so this part here, this is where you are going to 
do the scaffolding. Um, scaffolding is not about doing the task for the child while he watches, but it is about doing shortcuts for the child. Right? So, for example, manggod is, um, for example, unzipping or pag-abri pag sa zipper sa bag or pag-open og uh, food container. Kaya ka ng mga baunan nga na-lock. Then, or pagbutang og straw sa tetra pack. These are not scaffolding if you will be the one doing it for the, for the child. Um, according to Vygotsky, it is called scaffolding if you are going to to just prepare, lead them to doing it. Like for example, in unzipping the bag, you can unzip daw, sa so medyo pilaka inches lang, and then you let the child uh, unzip the rest of it. So, makita niya, example una, nagmodel siya, and then gi buhat na din sa bata. Or, open the food container, what you can do is you can loosen the cup, and then ang bata na ang mag-open. Or, uh, for, for the straw, instead of putting the straw in the tetra pack, pwede ni mong i-lead lang ang straw to the hole nga dito ibutang ang tetra pack. And then the child can do it. So, that's the scaffolding. And, um, the, the, the examples that I've mentioned uh, shows how a right amount of assistance can allow the child to accomplish the task. So, as long as na uh, hatagan mo siya at assistance, una, i-model lang sa nimo. So, teachers should uh, scaffold in a way that the gap is bridged between the learner's current skills and the desired skill level. So, as learners become more proficient, uh, able to complete tasks on their own that they could not initially do without assistance, the guidance can be withdrawn. So, pwede na nimo siyang i-withdrawn, which is called scaffold and fade away scaffolding. So, if we are going to illustrate, so this is the MKO uh, in Vygotsky's theory. He, uh, naan siya MKO. MKO is the uh, more knowledgeable other. So, uh, scaffolding daw, uh, when done appropriately, can make a learner confident and eventually make him accomplish that, ta that task without any need for assistance. So, when MKO scaffolds or the more knowledgeable other, the process moves in four levels. So, this is the MKO responsibility and this is the learner's responsibility. Uh, ang four levels of movement nga gi uh, that Vygotsky mentioned is I do, you watch. So, the MKO will do while the learner will watch, will observe. Then, the next level is I do, you help. So, I do, the learner will help, will, will assist. So, if you will notice, this is the, the chunk of responsibility. So, there's a bigger chunk of responsibility in the more knowledgeable other. There's a smaller chunk for the learner. As they go up, I do, you help. So, the, the, the learner's responsibility is, uh, is bigger or relatively bigger. But uh, must be, uh, the MKO's responsibility is still bigger. On the third level, you do, I help. So, medyo... Um, the learner's responsibility is now bigger than the more knowledgeable, um, more knowledgeable other. So you do, I help. So the the learner is now the one doing, while the MKO is the one assisting. And then the last part is you do, I watch. So you do it, then I will watch. And this is what they what we call already the scaffold and fade away technique. So, pwede na nimo na siyang uh, pwede na nimo na siyang i so, na siya, buhian no? para the learner can already perform the, the task. So, um, how do you use it in the classroom? Say, uh, there are actually several ways to use it in the classroom. One is you have to know uh, each student's ZPD or zone of proximal development. In order to use ZPD and scaffolding techniques successfully, 
it is crucial to know your student's current level of knowledge. Without this information, you won't be able to teach them in their ZPD or provide effective scaffolding support. Before you, uh, let's say, for example, before we begin with a lesson uh, with uh, CPD or using uh, Vygotsky's scaffolding, you have to find their baseline knowledge by um, giving a short quiz or having an introductory discussion on the topic where you ask students questions to figure out what they already knew, know. So, mura siya ka ng diagnostic, no? Pre exam. Uh, also remember that each student will have a different ZPD for each topic you teach. So if a class has widely varying ZPD for a specific topic, it can be more effective to have them work in groups or individually while you walk through the classroom and provide guidance so that you can tailor your techniques to each student's ZPD. So you Next is, you encourage group work. Uh, group work man God can be very effective, uh, effective way of using scaffolding principles um, because students can learn from each other while working together on a project. So, katong mga more advanced students can help others learn while improving their own skills by explaining their thought process. So you have to you have to create groups that contain because uh, students are varied, diba? So we have to create groups that contain students with different skill sets and learning levels to maximize the learning. So dili pwedeng ubano ni mo tanan ang mga maayo tanan, mga bright, mga active, din ubanon po ni mo tanan ang mga less bright, less active. Yan na siya when you form a group. Next is don't offer too much help. Okay, so, uh, ang potential uh, drawback sa Vygotsky's scaffolding is the possibility of providing too much help. Uh, there, there is ma ma misconception bitaw that uh, because you are doing modeling, you are, you are going to do it for them. Ano siya? So, um, murag, if they find, you find them having difficulty, you already... Uh, go and offer help. So, if if you are using scaffolding techniques, don't jump in right away and start offering advice. So, you have to let your student work on their own first. And when they begin to struggle, you first start by asking them questions about what they've done and what they think should should they do next. Or as much as possible, ask open-ended questions that encourage them to find a solution on their own as opposed to telling them the next step. So, for example, if a student is trying to build uh, a block tower, it is more helpful to say things like, how do you think you can make this tower stronger? Or, why do you think the tower fell down? Or, you, than, rather than telling him that you have to make the base bigger so that it will not fall down. So, that's the how you are going to use the scaffolding. The number four, have students think aloud. Diba, uh, earlier, I mentioned the private speech. So Vygotsky believed that um, when, when kids or students or learners uh, speak their thought, um, mas, maka, mas makatabang siya. So uh, it, it would be better now that students discuss their thought process uh, because this is the one way of the uh, this is the best ways to figure out where their current skills are and make sure they're actively learning. As a student uh, is working on a project, have the student talk about why she's making certain decisions, what she thinks she should do next, and what she's used unsure about. So when you give advice, make sure you also explain your own thought process so so students can understand why you're making the decisions you did. Okay, so that's about the Vygotsky's scaffolding uh, theory. Now we will go to Jean Leave. Um, Jean Leave is a professor emerita in the Department of Geography 
uh, in the Berkeley Graduate Division. Uh, she is a social anthropologist um, with a, a strong interest in social theory. Uh, much of her ethnographic, uh, much of her work are actually ethnographically based. You no, know, the the re, her research are based on or concentrates on the reconceiving of learning learners and everyday life in terms of social practice. And she has published several books, uh, which are uh, actually ethnographically based. Um, Leif. Uh, she believed that both the formal and informal theories of learning are merely, merely theories of teaching, curricula, or assessment, and none of them feature learners as their primary focus. Um, according to her, our more informal beliefs about how learning happens come from our own embedded position in institutions of schooling. Um, I have watched one of her speeches. She said that that's be the, the reason behind that it's because we have spent or we have so many hours spent in institutions. So when we created learning theories, but uh, this is, these are actually now not learner centered or the, we are not giving emphasis, but we are giving emphasis on teaching, how to teach how to do it so that the, they will be able to learn more. So she has uh, actually this, this um, situated learning theory she was doing together with um, Etienne Winger uh, in 1991. So what is situated learning theory? It's a theory that learning best occurs embedded in an authentic situation where the activity or belief behavior or culture to be learned is taking place um, i remember her her phrase in the speech where she said we are learning on the things that we are already doing and her study actually started when she went to liberia to um to do some research and uh, she came up with, I, I mean, she was introduced to this tailoring group, a group of people who are suing. And then they discovered, marag pa backward bitaw ang pag, pag, pag discover. So, diyan niya nakuan that learning daw is, is done while you are actually doing what, the, the thing. No? Ginahim mo na ni mo, while dito pa ni mo na realize, ah, ing ani on day siya. So, according to the theory, collaboration and expert modeling play an important role in situated learning. Um, yeah, so community of practice. So, now community of practice. So, the community of practice, uh, the, this term is actually, uh, it, it's coined to refer to a group of people with common interests. A group of people with common goal of improving and a group of people who shared exper experiences so this is how it looks like um, beginners or novice enters in the community of practice so or it could be group of people um, from the periphery and through collaboration so if we say periphery, that's the outskirts na outskirts of the Isaka area. So from the periphery, you enter into the community of practice and through collaboration, interactions, and engaging, you become, you move towards being the expert or master, right? And um, through beliefs, behavior, and culture. And uh, this happens, or, or this learning is passed on the other beginners through the same repeated process. Um, examples of this are learning uh, to ride a bike, internships, um, on-the-job training, work-based learning, project-based learning, foreign language learning. So, 
um you emphasize yung katong foreign language uh, learning it's like you are uh kana bitong for foreign language it's better to learn habang naa na ka ginabuhatan nimo di ba uh po eskwela kag language medyo di, medyo lisod sa himo on but if you emerge into people who are speaking that language like say for example russian imong imong um eskwelahan if you emerge into people who are speaking russians you are going to learn uh, faster than you are in the classroom Ayan na siya. so who might benefit from this method of course the students uh, the pre-service new or new teachers and the veteran teachers so teachers can benefit from situated learning um we already realize the benefits of internships and free service teacher training, but through ongoing training and development of skills, veteran teachers can and should also benefit or reap the benefits of this learning theory. We learn by watching, doing, and discussing, uh, and teachers learn from collaborating with other teachers regularly, and technology has made that even easier to accomplish via professional learning networks so collaboration is very important and that's it thank you